using the deep learning to understand the evolution of the charges. Well, hello. My name is Fernando Cairo. I've been visiting here, as Joel mentioned, uh, at UCSC, uh, working in uh, using deep learning basically to understand how major mergers evolve in time. Uh, working here with my advisor, advisor Mark Huertas, and for example, also getting a lot of useful insights from Joel, from David. So I will show you what I've been doing. So. Um, when we want to find mergers, probably the most obvious approach to that is, of course, using close pairs. That's like, you have an image, you try to find uh, galaxies that are fairly close, and well, you try to guess if they are actually mergers or not. Or not. The main problem with that is that you may have some sort of uh, projection effects, actually, that can uh, suggest that you have a merger there when actually you are not, you are not having anything. Uh, so. New methods were developed after that. Uh, probably uh, the, these two are the most famous, like non-parametric non methods, uh, which uh, try to quantify the structure that we can find in a galaxy uh, in order to detect in some sort of ongoing merger activity. So, in a summary, this, um, these two methods, like CAs, uh, concentration, asymmetry, and clumpiness, and GM20, Gini and M20, uh, try to that basically provide some numbers that are some, some sort of summary of the information that you have in the pixels of an image. So uh, well, here you have like, for, for example, in, in the paper of Consolis in 2003, uh, he shows how uh, according to, uh, well, concentration, asymmetry and clumpiness, uh, you have different uh, kinds of galaxies in this sort of space. Uh, and well, here the blue points you can see, and using this sort of uh, relation, you can separate mergers from other kinds of galaxies. In a similar manner, you have also an expression for GNM20, and uh, well, basically over this line, you can also separate uh, galaxies that are supposed, are supposed to be mergers from other kinds of galaxies. So, um, of course, these two methods have uh, some uh, limitations. And for example, one more recent method called like MIV, like uh, multimode uh, intensity and dispersion that uses like uh, machine learning and also segmentation maps uh, was able to uh, perform better than these two methods. So uh, this is sort of the let's say a state of the art uh, regarding like merger detection. But what we want to do using deep learning is basically sum uh, summarizing these two ideas. First, we want to use the whole information containing the pixels of the image instead of only some, uh, I don't know, limited uh, set of numbers that are trying to describe that. And also we want to um, obtain information that, uh, well, I mean, we want to be able of getting, for example, physical information from an image directly using for that uh, training uh, based on simulations, because if we train with simulations, we uh, can know all that actually uh, real physical information of an ongoing merger. So uh, for example, what we want to do is having this image first answer the question of if this image actually a merger or not. Uh, so. In this case, we are trying to solve a classification problem and trying to decide if what we are seeing in an image is actually an, uh, a merger or maybe an, two galaxies that are not, not, are not interacting at all, who knows. But after doing that, we also would like to retrieve, as I said, some physical parameters of this merger that we can see here, like for example, the mass ratio to decide is this merger is like a major or a minor merger. Um, have a notion of uh, the time that has passed or how much time do we need to reach like a merger merger situation. Well, we need to define what a merger is, but uh, have some notion of we, if we are seeing like a post-merger or a pre-merger, and well, why, why not have some information of the gas and being able to answer if we are seeing like a wet merger or a dry merger. So, uh, 
that's that's the main goal of 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 using deep learning to do this. Uh, as, as and as I said before, basically we want to use the whole information and, and not just a few numbers to try to do that. So um, well, as I said, the idea is to then train on simulations. Uh, since there we have all the physical information that we we want to use to train in order to answer all of these questions in here. Um, so we are using a horizon AGN simulation, lambda CDM simulation with uh, uh, this box size of 100 uh, megaparsecs uh, and a special res resolution of one kiloparsec uh, well, and a stellar and AGN feedback. Uh, well, we claim that this, sim uh, this resolution is more than enough because we are trying to find mergers which are some sort of long distance long distance uh, phenomena and we can easy, easily find still some sort of uh, markers or indicators of ongoing measures. So for this sort of uh, challenge, we really don't need more resolution than this. So uh, in order to, get, uh, to identify our mergers, we use a merger tree where we analyze all the um, mass exchanges going uh, in between galaxies from one step to another. So in the merger tree of this simulation, we basically have 750 time steps going from redshift six to zero with a time resolution of roughly 20 million years. Uh, but we only have like images available each 200 million years. So if we have an image here, we really will have another one in here and so on and so on. So um, the, we, well, the, the, the selection procedure that we perform in order to get our sample of mergers in order to do our experiment experiments basically was um, well using this this uh, mass exchanges that we know we know when we are having a merger or not basically then we are taking a, a mass cut we are only considering mergers with more than 10 to the 10 solar masses and in this uh, redshift range from four to five um, so for every merger that we have identified from the merger tree and after using this cut, also considering, for example, a mass ratio larger than 30%, which means that we are only considering major measures, uh, we then um, also computed the uh, viral radius and the dynamical time of, of, of that merger because we are going to use those parameters for then uh, perform a more uh, serious or uh, selection. So, um, when, when, we, when we find a merger, basically we try to go back on time a few time steps in order to find the corresponding pre-mergers and a, a little bit forward also to find the post-merger post uh, version of that galaxy. So we do that considering, considering uh, the distance between the progenitors to be uh, less than one uh, video radius when we go back and uh, one dynamical time when we go forward. That sounds a little bit confusing. But basically, it's something like this. So, for example, if I found this galaxy as my merger, I go back uh, all the time steps uh, required until the separation between my galaxies is um, larger than one viral radius of the main progenitor. And uh, since I know in here the dynamical time, I can go back, uh, I can go forward uh, as much as I need until reach one dynamical time. So, uh, for example, here, as I said, we have a merger, we have the previous uh, stages, so time is going in on that direction. So basically all these galaxies in here are like pre-mergers and this is a post-merger. This will be like the closest thing to uh, our merger. Uh, so in, just to mention the numbers, so uh, in the simulation, in the, after the selection, in terms of mass and redshift, we were having all these, of the, all these galaxies and we got like, almost 9,000 uh, 9, uh, galaxies that were identified as mergers like in this point. And after checking back and forward on time, we got a total number of uh, 40,000 galaxies more or less uh, identified as pre-mergers and post-mergers basically. And from all those galaxies, basically we generated uh, different images considering different projections and different dance to have like our pool of uh, images that we are going to use to train. So uh, the confusing thing that I was saying before is that uh, when we are going back on, on time in considering the distance of our mergers, uh, 
we are basically going until this line and until the separation between the, the two progenitors is, is, is at least one virial radius. And the interesting thing of, of this plot is that how can we know that actually our, our selection is, is correct? Well, we cannot we cannot know that, but so far we, the best option that we have is the, the model proposed by Lotz in 2008, uh, where he, she defines many merger stages and basically defined by a first pass, a second pass, and then the mergers are basically approaching until becoming only one galaxy. So we saw here that our major mergers actually uh, satisfy this sort of model, so well, that's uh, a way of See, see that we are being consistent with previous works. So, well, from our simulation, basically we got like no mergers, things like these galaxies that are not very disturbed, pre-mergers, basically a pair of galaxies in, uh, in, a, in a merger process. And well, post-mergers, basically galaxies that seem very perturbed because they are the result of, of, of a merger actually. So we ran some experiments to have a notion of how this is working. Uh, and here, for example, we are trying to identify uh, a merger and a no merger. Basically, if we have a, a galaxy, we want to know if the galaxy is in here or in here. And for that case, we got these results. Uh, so, well, first we train with uh, 10,000 galaxies, a half of one theory and the other half in the other one, uh, half of the size for the validation set and also for the testing set. And what we have in here is that uh, we selected our mergers in this range of dynamical time, which means that we are actually seeing, uh, let's say in a more stronger way, the, the features that define a merger, I don't know, title features, whatever. While in this second experiment, we chose those mergers in a wider range. So probably many of those features maybe disappear, maybe disappear, who knows. Uh, and that's why basically we got a larger accuracy in here than in here. Uh, then we basically did some, something similar, similar, but now trying to identify galaxies that are pre-mergers from post-mergers. So another classification problem. Uh, and here the same. So uh, basically for the pre-mergers, we chose them in the range for minus one dynamical time to minus uh, 0.2. And for the post-mergers from 0.2 to uh, one dynamical time, well, in here we use the full range. What's the idea of in here? That probably in the in the center region around zero dynamical times, the I don't know the the, the, the distinction between a pre-merger and a post-merger is not easy to is to make. So again, in here we got an accuracy over 96 percent. Well, in here we only got a 90 percent. And well, future ideas about this. Basically, uh, we, we I'm only showing you here like classification problems going to the a regression thing and trying to try to recover some physical parameters. Also, of course, include include more realistic physics in our simulations. We need to include, include noise, dust, light cone, and see how the performance decreases. Here we only have like an upper limit on how we can perform. Uh, also, we, we need to generate images using other simulations and, and see how, for example, different prescription, prescriptions of feedback or stuff like that can influ influence or affect the, the, well, how the deep learning matching works. And also we would like to use catalogs of real data to see if our machine can actually predict properly uh, how mergers look in observations. Thanks. Uh, just one quick question mm -hmm. uh, while the next speaker set up the computer. Uh, on this slide, I understood that we all the same unnoisy images, is that right? Oh, what, sorry? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is basically the, the best case that we can who are you? So, just a comment mm -hmm. on that. Uh, it would be really interesting if you have got a phone to just do a uh, sort of pushy advice to let up the observation and just to see like, how that's affecting uh, you know, uh, this classification of emerging on its own. It's very interesting. It can really explain like, some of the observational efforts that we play here, right? So, I'm trying to. Exactly, totally, because I mean, you can sort of. <laughs> Understand how the observations and maybe under predicting the number yeah, of mergers or stuff like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think we have to move. Okay. On. Perfect. Thank you. So next speaker is uh, Chris Mark. Uh, 